Hey everybody, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today I am sharing with you my card that I made for the all to new 2016 August Inspiration Challenge. And I went with the color scheme, and the color scheme was dark pink, light pink, gray, black, and white, my favorite combination. So I couldn't resist. And I used the all to new A Beautiful Day stamp set, the all to new mini ink cube set in warm grays, some Distress Stain and Distress Ink, some Archival Ink, Distress Crackle Paint, which is the really cool part of this project if I do say so, as well as some sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. So if you have never stamped any of the Altenew layered stamped images, they are incredibly cool. And the flowers have four layers, the leaves have three. So you're gonna see me stamping the flowers here. I am using the Altenew uh, mini ink cube set, as I mentioned earlier, and those cube sets are pretty fun. They have four ink colors that get increasingly dark. So as you stamp each layer, you go down in color. So each layer gets darker and each layer adds detail and dimension to the flower. So by the end, you get this really pretty finished flower. And that is the first layer that I stamped in the lightest color, which is Morning Frost. And you can see it stamps a solid. And here's the second layer. I'm gonna stamp that in the second color, <laughs> Evening Gray. And this adds another layer of detail to the flower. These images are can be a little tricky to line up. I usually try to see that little divot in the top petal. I usually kind of go off that, as well as that bottom petal that's got sort of like that turned over part. I try to line up those two areas with this stamp set to get them to work together. But if you're off a little bit, it's it's really not that big a deal. These are actually fairly forgiving, so I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about it. The third layer is uh, evening, or no, sorry, moon rock in the stamp, in the ink set. And here you can see how the layers are coming together to create this really detailed floral image. It's so pretty. And then for the outline, I actually didn't use the fourth color in the Altenew inks. I went with Jet Black Archival Ink. The reason I did that was because the inspiration challenge involved black and gray, and so I wanted some black in my flowers. I thought it kind of needed that little black, crisp black edge to finish them off. And then I also knew I was gonna add some crackle paint on top of this, and Archival Ink is waterproof, so I knew it would resist the crackle paint and you'd at least get a nice outline image. So here, I've, you can see I've stamped two of the flowers and two of the leaves, and then I stamped a bunch of the additional floral pieces from that stamp set in the archival jet black ink. I'm cutting off this one piece because this, uh, the flowers I'm going to get wet with the crackle paint, and I didn't want to get this piece wet. That uh, leaf in the upper right is a screw up, so <laughs> just ignore that one. But here I am, I'm applying the crackle paint, and this was kind of my, I don't know, Dr. Frankenstein experiment for this card, but I think it turns out great, and, and I really wanted to share this with you guys. Um, this is a this is inspired by a technique that you can learn from Tim Holtz in the online card classes Creative Chemistry series, I believe it was in 101, and I hadn't ever done it over a stamped image before. But, you know, I was I was willing to try it, and it actually turns out really well in the end, I, I think. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the crackle paint. This is clear rock candy, so it dries clear. And I'm basically squishing it all over the, the stamped image. I'm using sort of an old round brush that I had in my stash. It's nothing fancy. And I'm just sort of spreading the crackle paint into the like edges of the stamped image, like all like over the whole thing and then into the outline edges. I'm trying to not go too far over the outline just because I, I was, my plan is to cut, fussy cut these out. So I didn't want it like seeping over too much. And I also wanted to kind of uh, corral the ink that I plan to put over this. So you can see where I'm kind of dabbing it into the outline edges. I'm not being super careful about it, but you know, close enough. And I am putting on a fairly thick layer of this. Uh, it's, you know, it's not super thick, but it's like a medium layer. Because the the thicker you put it on, the bigger the crackles you get. And I knew I wanted to use uh, ink on top of this to, to color the flowers. So the bigger the, so I wanted some fairly big cracks. And here you can see they've dried. 
did take about two and a half hours in arid Colorado, but it was fairly thick, so it could take longer if you're more humid in a more humid location. But this is sort of the fun part. All right, so I'm taking my Distress Ink. This is spun sugar, and I'm using a flat water brush. Now, I'm not using the water in the barrel. I'm just using the water from the cup. And I'm basically dabbing the color over the crackle paint. And what's happening is the color runs through the cracks, and it colors the image underneath. And the, the feel I was going for was a tinted black and white vintage photo look, so I didn't want it to overpower the gray of the stamping. I did I just wanted it to like to basically tint it. And it works really well. Um, the ink is a, is less pigmented than the stain. So like I use the stain for the second layer. This is picked raspberry. And it's, you know, it's a darker color and it's also more pigmented, so it, it's a little bit more vivid, but it's still fairly subtle especially since you know you can water it down and and less is definitely more when you start out so start out with less you can always add but you can subtract especially once it's under the crackle paint but you can sort of um like add water to it like if you if you put the color on and then add some water above it it does kind of help dilute it down a little bit and here i use a i'm using a thinner water brush because these areas got a little bit trickier they were a little bit skinnier so i needed to kind of bring the size down on the brush. But I wanted to uh, paint the insides of the petals and keep the outs outer edges, especially those parts that are sort of turned up white, I wanted to, or gray in this case. And the effect is actually exactly what I was going for. It's really pretty. And then the crackle paint itself adds this like shimmer to it. So it's very cool. And so there's the completed flower, and I do that for both flowers, and then I fussy cut them out, and it, it actually looks really good if I do say so myself. <laughs> anyway, here I am, uh, heat embossing, well, I'm going to heat emboss the greeting. from the, It's also from the stamp set. It says, sending hugs and happy thoughts. I'm, stamp, or I'm embossing it in silver. This is on the black cardstock, and I'm using, this is another ratty brush I've got lying around that I use, it's really small, and I use it to get any excess embossing powder off of like any area it shouldn't be in. And especially silver is gonna show up a lot on black, so I was pretty careful about that. And here you see it get heat embossed, and it looks pretty good. And now I've layered it over a piece of fuchsia it's like a satin finish cardstock so it has kind of a sheen to it it's quite pretty and it's actually pretty heavyweight cardstock and i'm going to tape that down to the bottom third of the card at this point i had kind of already decided how i wanted to lay the flowers or at least i had a rough idea so i'm just going to go ahead and tape down these these uh, leaves i had fussy cut out all of the elements I did not fussy cut out the middle of those leaves because I knew that they were going to be hidden, but everything else I was pretty careful about. And the flowers I'm now putting on with some foam tape. I wanted to raise those up to give it some dimension, which really helped a lot. It actually made a big difference and it kind of, it goes a long way in making those flowers even more of a focal point than they would have already been. And it really kind of adds some uh, level to the shimmeriness of the flowers, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> anyway, I also have a bunch of the extra images from that stamp set stamped just in black on the white cardstock. And I'm going to add all those in right now using my glue pen. And you can, even though these seem kind of minor and, and small, they actually add a, they kind of finish it off. I think it makes a difference and it really kind of, uh, pulls together the color scheme that I was going for with this inspiration challenge. It's like the black and white, you got the gray of the flowers, and, the, and then the two tones of pink, and hopefully that helps to, uh, you know, bring across what I was going for with the card. And I, I thought, it, you know, those little black and white elements make a difference, and they add the little finishing touch there. And finally, I put on some sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. This is the Sweet Pea Mix. This mix comes with a pale pink, a white, pale yellow, pale green, and kind of an iridescent -y darker pink. They're all very pretty. I wind up using the pale pink, the white, and the iridescent -y pink for this. Now, I'm, I'm kind of a sequin nut, and I could spend 20 minutes like rearranging these, which I 
actually probably do, but I'm going to cut most of that out and just take you down to where I'm done. And uh, so you can see kind of the final uh, arrangement that I come up with, which is fairly simple. And I do wind up uh, gluing all of that down with Ranger Multimedia Matte. And there you can see hopefully some of the shimmer that that crackle paint creates on those flowers. It's really interesting. It's, it's not glittery, but it is, it definitely has like a sheen to it. That's really pretty. And there you can see how I, uh, I finished off those sequins with some white enamel accents, as well as some platinum stickles, glitter glue. That's a pretty good shot of the, a little bit of the shine as well as the crackle. And here's a real close up of that crackle effect. And it, I mean, in person, it looks really, really good. So I strongly encourage you to try it if you haven't done that. It is really, really interesting and different. But as always, thanks so much for watching. And you can find more from me at blacksheep303.com, my blog. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more from me, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear from you. I welcome any comments, questions, ideas, anything. So leave me a comment below or send me an email over at my blog. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a really great day.